Good morning. My name's Malcolm and I'm here to do the final uh, preach on our series, Loving the Lord, Our God, and Loving Our Neighbour. So before I start, let me just take a moment to invite the Holy Spirit to, to be here with us. Jesus, would you come and would you fill us with your Spirit as we delve deeper into your Word and as we seek to follow you and follow in your ways. Would you teach us? Would you help us to go deeper? In Jesus' name, amen. So, we're just taking our reading from Mark chapter 12, starting at verse 28. The most important commandment. One of the teachers of the religious law, was standing there listening to the debate. He realised that Jesus had answered well. So he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, or your soul, or your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. And love your neighbour as yourself. We often regard this, don't we? We, we do, rightly we regard this as the first and greatest commandment. That's what it says in Matthew 22, verse 38. Um, and as children of God, we're wanting to really imitate God in how we can love him back, because he loved us first, and how we can love the people around us. So over these last few weeks, we've been delving into this, into this verse, and we've had, uh, we've, we've had a, a talk on how we love God with all our heart, with all our soul, and we've had a talk on how we love God with all our, our strength and how we love him with all of our, our mind. So I'm going to be focusing today on, on, the, on the final part of this commandment, loving our neighbour as ourselves. How can we put this command into practice? This command that Jesus has given us to love our neighbour. So first of all, let's just have a quick recap on this word love. What is this, this thing called love, this crazy little thing called love? Um, in the Bible, we, we hear lots spoken about love. And in our culture, we, we use the word a lot, don't we? Love you. We say it probably every day, probably multiple times a day, some people. Um, but in the Bible, we've got a number of different words um, that describe love. A number of words in Greek and in Hebrew. So we've come across the word agape, which is that sacrificial, pure love, that unconditional love. We have the, the word philia, which describes the loyalty, the companionship or the shared experience, kind of brotherly love. We have the word storge, which is a love that, that it describes fondness and dependency or that familial love. And then we have the, the physical and emotional connection, the intimate love, the romantic love, which the word eros is used to depict. So we've got these words in Greek. Those are all Greek words. But this word that Jesus is referring to here comes from the, the Old Testament. And we hear it, we hear it um, it's a command that, that the Jews have uh, used daily in their, in their prayers. And the word that is used here is a Hebrew word, ahava. Sometimes this word ahava refers to physical affection. So the king of Persia showed ahava for Queen Esther. But there are other Hebrew words that more accurately describe this type of love. Ahava is a broader um, sense 
and, and it gives a, it's got a broader meaning for this word. Um, so Ahava is, is a deep love, a deep affection, the care that one person shows another. So, for example, Abraham showed Ahava for his son Isaac. So we see it's got a, a parental love dimension. Jonathan showed Ahava for his friend David. So it's, it's got this sense of having brotherly love. And the whole crowd showed Ahava towards their King David, um, we, we read in the, in the Old Testament. Also, God showed Ahava throughout the Old Testament. He showed Ahava to the Israelites. And in Deuteronomy, we discover the feeling side of this word, Ahava. God showed his affection for you, it says in Deuteronomy. He chose you because of his Ahava for you, because of his love for you. And this is the character of God, isn't it? This is who God is. God loves because he loves. And God's Ahava love is everlasting. It has no conditions. Jeremiah 33 Verse 3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Like a husband's love for his wife or a parent's love for their child. But this Ahava love of God also expresses itself through action. Deuteronomy 4 verse 37 says, Because of his Ahava for your ancestors, because of his love for your ancestors, he brought you out of Egypt with great power. God acted on his love for his people. So just like God's love, human love is to show itself through action too. All of God's actions are centred around love. After all, God is love. His very nature is love. And it compels him to act out of love. It's all God knows. He can't do it any other way. The Old Testament teaches that I show my love for God by how I treat the people around me. And again in Deuteronomy, God defends the cause of the orphan and the widow. He shows his ahava for the immigrant, giving them food and clothing. And so we also are to show love, to show Ahava for the immigrant or the outsider. We imitate God's Ahava by showing Ahava for others. And this is the idea underneath the famous line that we're looking at here that Jesus quotes, you are to love your neighbour as yourself. You are to Ahava your neighbour as yourself. This word that Jesus is referring to in this verse, Ahava, the Lord your God, with all your heart. Ahava, God, with all your soul. Ahava, with all your mind and with all your strength. And Ahava, your neighbour, as yourself. And remember, we, we love, don't we, because God first loved us. That's what it says in 1 John 4.19. We love because God first loved us. So a little recap there on, on this word Ahava, this love um, that we've been looking at over these last few weeks. The teacher of the law, when Jesus reveals this as the greatest commandment, then asks Jesus another question. He says, so who is my neighbour? And Jesus told him this story. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. 
A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Welcome back. So, what is Jesus saying here in this story? Jesus is saying that our neighbor is anyone that we come across. Our neighbor is not limited to somebody who lives nearby. It's anybody that we encounter, and particularly the vulnerable, and particularly the, ne the needy, and even our enemies and strangers. We saw, didn't we, in, in that video, in that Bible story that Jesus, that Jesus gives, the Samaritans were enemies of the Jews, and it was them that it was him that showed love by meeting the needs of the person who'd been beaten up. I went to visit my sister last year. She lives in a town called Bradford. And as we were walking through the town of Bradford, I was, I was shocked at how many people were living on the streets. Um, obviously, we get a lot of people living on the streets in London as well. Um, but it was, it was quite shocking to see. Now, I don't know about you, but I find it very easy to walk by. That's my natural instinct, to just walk by. But as I walk through the town with my sister, every homeless person that she saw, she stopped. And I initially was thinking, oh, that's, that's great. You know, and then, then she got, gets her purse out and think, oh, no, she's going to give money. I, I'm not sure whether we should be giving money to, to homeless people. Is, is that right? Should we give it to a charity? But she had this connection with people. She'd got to know some of the people that, she, that we walked past. And as she took her purse out, she took out a card. I was watching her. And she handed, handed over a card to a homeless person. And I said, said to her after, what, you, what were you giving, giving that person? She said, oh, it's just a voucher for uh, Sainsbury's or, or Greg's. And I was really moved by that, that she has thought through how she's going to meet people's needs that she comes across. Rather than just walking on by, sorry, I don't have any change, which is usually my response. So I've been inspired by the way that she acted there. And so I, I try to make sure that I've always got, these days, a card that I can give to somebody in need if they need some food or something to nourish them. Who is my neighbour? Anyone we come across who's in need of receiving love. That's clear, isn't it, that Jesus is saying that. But I want us to also think today about this word neighbour. Because the dictionary says, 
a neighbour is a person living next door or very near. That's what it says as the dictionary definition. So I wonder, could we just take a moment? You might need to pause the video in a minute. But why don't we just take a moment to think about the names or the faces, if you don't know the names, of the people who live either side of you, opposite you, on your street. How many houses are there on your street? Let's just think about the people that we see most days or the people that we see most weeks. The reality is, we see our neighbours very often. We come across our literal neighbours very often. Wouldn't it be really good if we could learn how to love our literal neighbours and practice loving our literal neighbours? I've got a, a neighbour who lives number 46, um, called Jane. Lovely neighbour. We're really blessed to have amazing neighbours where we live. Um, but Jane's been really poorly. Um, she's been collected by an ambulance and taken to hospital at least three times in the past 12 months. And, and I've really obviously been praying for Jane um, but I really felt compelled a few months ago to, to ask Jane if, if I could come and help her in the garden. I love gardening, if you know me, I'm always in the garden. I love, I love gardening. And Jane used to love gardening too, but because of her illness, she's not able to garden anymore. Now, for some reason, I don't know what it was, I felt slightly embarrassed at going to ask this question, but it was a real conviction. And earlier this week, it was really great to be able to, to have a conversation with Jane and, and say to her, could I, could I come round and do some, do some gardening in your garden? And she was really, really pleased to say yes. And I was really pleased that she said yes. I thought afterwards, I don't know why I was so feeling so um, embarrassed about asking that question. But it's great, isn't it? When, our, when we feel compassion for somebody, it's great to act on that. Um, and it, this is how we want to imitate God in the way that he shows compassion and the way that he loves us. So uh, we want to love our neighbours, the people that we come across every day, but we wanna, we, I want us to be thinking about our actual neighbours as well this morning. And... Unless you live in a far-flung place, you're probably part of a, a neighbourhood. And today, um, we, as Restore Loughton, are meeting in Alderton Junior School. And I'd like us today to have a little bit of fun as the family of God. Because we can have fun blessing the people around us and we can bless them at the same time. So, I want to ask you the question. Who's, who could you love and bless in your neighbourhood? For us, as the Alderton congregation, we meet in Alderton Junior School. Just down the road, we have the Oakwood Hill Estate. And we're part of helping to bring God's light into that, into that uh, estate. Up the road in the other direction, we've got over 400 new homes that have just been built. People moving into the area for the first time. I would love, love it if we could be the people who, who meet these new people coming into the neighbourhood and love them and bless them and give them uh, whatever it is that they, that they need, that, that welcome that they need into our, our neighbourhood. 
Now, I enjoyed my holidays. I've just come back from uh, three weeks of camping. So I feel, I feel a bit weary, as you, as you do when you camp. And if you're a camper, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and I yeah, really enjoyed it. But just, as we were getting towards the end, I said to my wife, Emily, I'm, I'm really just feeling excited now about getting home. Really excited about getting back to our, our neighbourhood. And just that urgency to get out onto the streets of our neighbourhood and see what it is that Jesus wants us, wants me to do, where he wants me to go, where he wants us to go as a church community. We don't have to just talk about loving our neighbours and bringing love into our neighbourhood. We can actually do it. It sometimes means a little bit of thought and planning, but are you ready to get practical? We're going to get practical today at Alderton as we meet as the Loughton congregation. As part of our service this morning, we're going to, we're going to go round the school and we're going to collect litter. We're going to make some special gifts for the teachers and put them on their desks so that when they arrive tomorrow morning uh, for the start of the new term, they'll receive that, that blessing, hopefully, if it's a nice gift. We're going to clean up and tidy the equipment that's been out in the playground all, all summer, ready for the start of term. And later on in the day today, um, if you're watching this on Sunday morning, um, we are going to be congregating again back at Alderson, a few of us. And we've been asked to help make the staff room an inviting place for the, the staff to come to. So we're going to paint the staff room at four o'clock today. If you're free at four o'clock today, you're very welcome to come along and help to make this a, a relaxing and beautiful place for the staff to retreat into. What a privilege that is. And, and it's great that the school feel that, that we are the people that can help to make that happen. So remember, as we think about and reflect on our response to God's love, in loving our neighbours and in loving the people in, in our neighbourhood as God's family, we don't want to be doing this out of any sense of duty or responsibility. We don't want to have a religious spirit about this. Remember, we love because God first loved us. It's only when we're filled to overflow with the Spirit that we can operate in this Ahava love, this all-encompassing, deep love of God. So Holy Spirit, would you fill us to overflow with the love of God? Holy Spirit, would you fill us to overflow with the love of God? Fill us to overflow. Fill us to overflow with your love.